Did you want to be famous when you were a kid? Bachpan se. I was three. If I don't get the claps and all that, I'll start crying. Do you believe in love? Of course I do. Nothing is worse than getting married to someone that you don't even love and living with them for years. You see that around? <sighs> Come on now. Most of the people in our industry are doing mad nonsense. Just yet speaking the truth. People are okay to talk shit about me all the time and nobody thinks about how I feel. You think I don't see what they write about me on Reddit? Reddit is is wild. They say the craziest shit about me. Both men and women need to realize that they need each other. Yeah, this idea of like I don't need anybody and feminism and not nah, I don't believe in this shit at all. In, in fact, I think feminism fucked up our society. It's very cool that Nora Fateh is saying this. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to disagree with me. Like your comment section is going to be like, "Ah, oh, she's the old school, she's a hypocrite, etc." I'm not. Because as a guy, you assume girls are really sweet. Girls are not sweet. Whoever told you that, don't be naive. In the real world, you know, we bash men cuz like we have this thing where it's in fashion to bash men and be like men are all assholes and A lot of women are crazy. You know what nazar is? Yeah. Some people look at you through envy and hate and jealousy. When I've met other stars, they are inherently predators. Here, when they start to use as a way to bait you into war, they sniff out victims. But my personality is a little intimidating. They kind of get a little bit like, "Are iske saath nahi?" Because she could talk. Sometimes right after a podcast is recorded my entire team knows that we've just recorded a blockbuster piece this is an epic conversation with Nora Fatehi who I believe especially after this recording is one of the Indian film industry's most misunderstood and miss represented people i feel people don't know the real nora fatehi people don't know what it takes for someone to leave their home country and set up a flourishing career in another country over the span of a decade i truly believe that the most interesting people that one can meet are people who are completely self made and if you're someone who's self made outside of your geographical comfort zone it adds layers and layers of personality lots of fun lots of perspective lots of serious talk on today's conversation you're going to enjoy one of the best free flowing podcasts that we've created on TRS with the epic nora fatehi Welcome to TRS Nora Fate. Thank you. What's up? All good. How are you? I'm good. Is this okay if I bring it close? Yeah, be chill. If you want to eat here, <laughs> if you want to meditate here on the show, it's all it, It's giving me meditation vibes here. Yeah. So we, we meditate in this room as I well. I love it. Yeah. I think if you meditate in a room like it changes the vibe of the space and mm-hmm. uh this is where all of our work comes out of so the space is very 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 special mm. and you just made it more special oh thank you with your you. presence <laughs> <laughs> i love it what's happening in life so much is happening so much you have to be specific cuz i could go and blabber on for the next 7 hours <laughs> go for it <laughs> so much yeah i mean like um i'm i'm a workaholic so i'm constantly working I'm, every day i'm running around i feel like it's non-stop for me i'm i'm at a point in my career where i'm trying to balance between doing my work in india and my work internationally which sometimes i feel like i have to split myself in half and be in one in two different places at the same time but i'm having a lot of fun i'm learning so much about myself i'm maturing um it's just a lot so much is happening what are you running towards Oh, I'm I'm running towards my goals. I have so many goals and they're all there and I've made some happen already. I've reached, you know, success at some point, but I have a lot of goals that I'm trying to fulfill. You want to talk about yeah. them? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so many like first of all, the fact that I've always wanted to do lead roles in films, right? So that's been like a 10-year struggle where I've been knocking on doors trying to get in and you know from doing songs special features to small roles supporting roles and climbing up those stairs <laughs> you know it's literally stairs some people you know they get the opportunity to just go inside the lift and then 
And then some people take the escalator, which is faster than the stairs. The stairs is tedious because when you take the stairs, like sometimes your legs hurt and you have to like take a break and you're like, oh, it's too much, it's a lot of stairs. <laughs> and then you're going up and the stairs get longer and they get longer and you're like, okay, well, this is a staircase not going to end. <laughs> so it, that is basically the analogy for um, this journey of mine, staircase. And sometimes <laughs> as you're climbing higher, the goal gets higher as well. It does. It's sometimes you're like, oh, this is nice. So I actually managed to reach this. 10 years ago, I would have never thought, you know, let me make my goal a little bigger, a little mm. more tougher, a little more almost unattainable. And then when you attain it, you're like, ah, it actually happened. You know, so this is the zone that I'm in that this probably describes my whole entire life. Uh, I'm just really happy that the first time I'm meeting you is over the course of a podcast because then it's recorded forever. That's true. <laughs> what I like about anyone who's grown up outside of India is that I've noticed that even within the media world, uh, you guys don't develop too much of an ego. Yeah. I don't know why that is. And this is what I've seen with all the, I mean, I'm sorry I'm terming you as a foreigner. No, but- it's fine. I mean, I'm I'm not from here. Um, but the only thing is so funny. You said, I'm sorry, I'm terming you as a foreigner. There was a time where I used to hate that term in the beginning when I just came to India, because I felt that everyone who used the term foreigner would just typecast all non-Indians into one box. They're all Goras, you know, and I'm like, wow, this is, this is not it. I don't like this. And and anytime they be like, oh, foreigner, foreigner. And I'm like, I'm not a foreigner. You know, I'm, I'm a brown girl too, you know. <laughs> you, you could pass off as Indian. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not. See, that's the thing. Foreigner means someone who's not Indian, right? Mm. But in our minds, the way it used to be used in the environment I was in, it was just like all European girls or all white girls. No offense to white people. I'm no, I'm not like, it's fine. Aren't you but a white person? I'm not. Okay, no. I'm okay, not. Okay, I'm, you know joke. what I mean? And, that's, and then I'd have to have arguments with people <laughs> trying to explain to them that I'm like, guys, like I'm a brown girl. I'm a North African Moroccan girl. And we relate to South Asians, just like, you know, you Middle Eastern, South Asian, North Africans. They really blend together. They have a lot of similarities. Um, this is something Indians don't understand about the Middle East and North Africa until they travel there. Until they travel, right? Then they realize, boss, it's both similar, you know, <laughs> and it's almost scary similar. Um, and so I always wanted to educate people and be like, no, you know, this is where I'm from. This is my background. We are very similar. All foreigners are not the same. Um, and then when they hear me speak Arabic, they'd be like, Are wah, those words are the same words in Hindi, you know, or in Urdu. And I'm like, yes, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Kursi, <laughs> Kursi kitab, you know, uh, a lot of things. There are a lot of things that are similar, but I like to focus on the similarities rather than the differences, which is... Also, the reason why I was able to make it here is because of the similarities and being relatable to the audience. They clearly saw something where they're like, boss, we can relate to her, right? Um, But yeah, you were saying about foreigners. (laughs) So what I've planned for this particular conversation is actually more of a, um, again, don't mind me saying this, but it's like a foreigner's perspective in India. And I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not a typecast you, Mm -hmm. but as a media professional, Mm -hmm. you hear things about other media professionals, Mm -hmm. whether they're actors, singers, whatever. Uh, If you spend time in this industry, I'm sure you would have heard something about me. I've heard Mm -hmm. something about you. For sure. Whenever people talk about you, it's always with a lot of respect Mm -hmm. within the media fraternity. Like there's a lot of respect put against your name because of your hard work and... Uh, I've heard people say things like, oh, she's a rocket. <laughs> so that was my only impression of you, honestly, uh, from a professional perspective. I'm not Crazy. talking about the front end. I'm not talking mm-hmm. about what people see. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know how if a footballer is seeing another footballer play the sport, mm-hmm. you can see it from a different lens. Right. And that's what's always come through about you. And I mean, the perfect example of someone who's come up the hard way. Yeah. Which is why sure. I, I think that's the core nucleus uh when it comes to going even further for sure yeah i I appreciate that i'm glad look that's a very positive thing to hear because not a lot of people have you know a good image especially like stars (sighs) our industry is really difficult you know and um in your face this this is relevant to stardom like 
people will see stars, media people will see stars, industry people will see stars, and they'll be like so nice to them in their face. And oh, sir, sir, ma, 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 and you know, all that. But behind their back, they will say other things about them related to their personality, the way they behave, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very rare that you hear people say good things about you behind your back, even if you're a star, you know? Um, and so when you're saying that this is the kind of things you hear about me, it's really nice. You saw some crazy shit while growing up? In my area, yeah, for sure. I I mean, we've seen shootings, we've seen drive-bys, we've seen drive-bys is when someone's in a car, sticks their gun out and starts shooting out and then drives away. That's a drive-by. That's the term we use. Um, we've seen school shootings or someone will come with a gun and, you know, there's a lockdown in the school. Everyone's hiding under their tables and the cops are coming. Um, Over we, what? I don't know. I mean, gang wars are crazy people are really crazy egos um we anyways have a massive gun problem in toronto to begin with so a lot of kids have guns for no reason they have access to guns um, did you have a gun no 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 i was very yeah. studious i didn't need a gun i have my, my 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 mouth my tongue my mouth is a weapon so i mean i attack with my words unfortunately and sometimes this but not anymore i'm a good girl now seem very yes. peaceful um uh, <laughs> no need to lie not really uh, a little bit depends i mean I'm, i think i've matured in the sense where i'm trying to figure out what to let go and what not to let go but yeah you know my industry is not an easy industry to work in it's a tough one um i love it don't get me wrong I'm very grateful but you have to be constantly on almost it's, it's not like a fighter mode, but you have to be constantly alert, constantly alert, constantly awake, constantly figuring out like who to trust, who not to trust, who's around you. You have to be very protective over your, you, your energy, your aura, your around everything. You have to be very protective. Um, and there's you, like, you know what Nazar is? If we believe in Nazar. I mean, I think people who are in the public eye um, do succumb to Nazar a lot. Because a lot of eyes are on them, a lot of jealousy, envy. What happens nowadays is if there is ever an event that I have to go for, and I try going for as few events as is possible because of this reason. Mm -hmm. But whenever I get back from that event, I always have some ache or pain. Yeah, that's definitely Nazar. I mean, you especially if you're someone, because everyone's aura is different, right? Some people's auras are more weaker than others. And some people's auras are more you gravitate towards them more. And that's what makes, that's the difference between a star and a non-star, to be frank. It's an energy. So s stars have an aura that make people want to look at them, make people admire them, make them aspirational. You know, sometimes you like some star and you don't even know why you like them. It's just like, there's something about them. That's their aura, you know? And that aura particularly, it grabs people's eyes and not all people's nazar eyes is good. Not all people's eyes, when they look at you, they don't always look at you in good intentions. Some people look at you through envy and hate and jealousy and wishing bad on you. And that is an energy I genuinely really believe in. If it catches on you, it can make you sick. It can make you mentally disturbed. It can make you lose your sleep. It can make you, you know, your body hurt. Um, it can kill your aura down where you don't look your best anymore. Um, that's where sometimes, sometimes you feel like you're depressed. You feel like you have anxiety. You feel all these things come into play. It's a very, it's an interesting topic, but it's, um, it's definitely very intricate. If you go really deep into it, you'll realize that that's why a lot of stars struggle through de depression and anxiety. That's why a lot end up being suicidal, for example, because when you have millions and billions of eyes on you and half of them don't even wish you well, and then you have your co-actors or your uh, competitors plotting against your fall and wanting to destroy you because of their envy and their ego and their uh, fear of you maybe doing really well and they don't want you to do well, people can do anything to destroy you and remove you from the way, you know? So what's the Arab way of getting rid of Nazar? There's so many ways. I mean, it depends also what religion you're in. Like, for example, Muslims will read Quran. They will read Ayat al-Kursi. They will pray a um, lot of uh, salt water baths. Um, there's also, depending on what culture you're in, um, 
there are ancestral rituals that are used to cleanse your aura and your spirit. There are many things that one does. Um, but obviously, uh, it's, it's, a t- it's a very deep conversation. Yeah, it's a deep one. <laughs> you have a whole occult side. Yeah, of course, definitely. I mean, uh, someone like me has to be very, like I said in the beginning of the podcast, alert, aware, and educated about certain things because... When you are in the public eye, you succumb to all these things. It is what it is. I mean, a lot of people might not want to discuss this, um, but and some people go, oh, I don't believe in this. This is all nonsense. But that's just a front. All people believe in this energies and, you know, Nazar and um, whatever comes under the umbrella of this conversation. And we live in a country that People are very spiritual and people do believe in this stuff. And our industry is run through this stuff, to be honest with you. What do you mean run through this? Um, in terms of being aware and educated about this and protecting yourself. Because, I mean, otherwise you will never last in an industry where um, here, Hollywood, the pop culture, anywhere where people's eyes are constantly on you. People are around you constantly. There's comp- competition, competitors. This one wants to, you know, be more bigger than you. This one wants to make more money than you. This one wants to rule. This one is scared because the other one is coming up and they're like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. this one's coming up. What do we got to do to bring them back down? All these things happen. So when you're in the midst of this and you're aware of it, you start to realize the importance of protecting your aura and your spirit. I've always wondered if someone can put Nazar on you digitally, like through watching you. Yeah, of on... course, hundred percent. So we digitally got... because huh, say, sorry. we've got some Nazar absorbing things in the yeah, background. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed. <laughs> of course, for, for yeah. that exact reason, hundred percent because. Uh, the person digitally can see your face. Mm. They can see your your picture. They can see your video. They can see your eyes. And the eyes is the gate of your soul, right? And how do people catch on to your aura? Through your soul and your spirit. So, of course, it's possible. You're a very interesting person. I know. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> like, you have a lot to say. You've not been on too many podcasts. No, because, you know, like, it's very, it's scary. You know, it's cancel culture era. So, yeah, but you're being much more open here in this room mm-hmm. than most Hindi film industry professionals or film industry professionals. Well, because in you're asking me certain questions, and I'm very spontaneous. And people who know me know that I'm an open book. I also I'm, have a lot here. Um, if you ask the right questions, you'll get those, those certain answers. Some people don't care about certain things. They just ask me, "Oh, okay, oh, what's your next project?" Then take it. So that's the answer I'm going to give who you. Who you're dating? Oh, oh yeah, no, who you who you're dating? Like so, and you need to, it's, it's ridiculous. And my answer is always nobody. So where do we go from there? But you got to ask the right questions, and it also depends on the theme. I guess for you, your podcast is about knowing deeper than just the projects, right? And Actually, my question is to you because you said something really interesting. So you come back from an event and your your bones are hurting. Uh, what do you do? Uh, what do you do to help yourself get out of it? And also, what do you do to protect yourself moving forward when you know it's going to happen? Firstly, I'll say that learning that you've picked up Nazar mm-hmm. is a skill. You mm-hmm. need to know that Nazar is on you. You usually feel very heavy, very drained. Yes. Or something starts hurting. Mm-hmm. Uh Again, I'm talking from the perspective of fame. Mm. I don't know if... I, I assume that when someone gets married and there's mm-hmm. a big mm-hmm. wedding, mm-hmm. that's where people would pick up Nazar. As For in the sure. Yeah, group. yeah, yeah. Especially like, yeah, a wedding, an event. Um, if you're not famous, you're not in this industry. Like we're just specifically speaking about our industry. But when you're not famous, you could go to a fam- family function yeah. and you'd be looking amazing and your cousin just like, Oh, I'm so jealous of how you look and how beautiful uh-huh. your hair is and how glowing your skin is and mm. boom, you know. So That's Nazar. Uh, like they don't know that they're putting the Nazar on you. Some of them, most of them know. Oh, really? Most of them know, yeah. Most of them know, yeah. Okay. It's got some evil people in this world. <laughs> most of Bro, them know. The salt water baths? That's yeah. That's my standard. I've, okay. I've seen that that doesn't completely help me. Mm-hmm. What washes it off is mm-hmm. if I go into the ocean. Like if you... Yeah. If you actually go to the beach and go in the, yes. that washes it off to a in yes. very deep degree. But at home, salt water bath, 
Mm-hmm. Do some mantras, mm-hmm. meditate, mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it's just time that heals it. Honestly, mm. uh, yeah, some of us don't have time. <laughs> yeah. Some of us need to go back in front of the crowd. Some of us have to go back in front of the camera. Some of us have to keep going. Right? We don't have time to, you know, you know it's like a battery. You know, when the battery has no charge left anymore, and then you got to charge it back up. Some of us don't have time to recharge again. So, what does one do? It's a very good question. Uh, who had like the biggest gravity? field around them or everyone you've ever met in this industry <laughs> I can't take names <laughs> cuz I'd freak them out and they'd probably call me 20 times <laughs> panicking so I can't take names but I can tell you that um a lot of them have probably more than nazar and they don't even know and they wonder like why their stomach is always hurting why they they have digestive issues why their f- films are not doing well why they are no longer you know that shining bright star that they once were they're doing everything they need they're working so hard they're doing the right projects they're writing working with the right people but it's not landing something is wrong like oh my god just 2 3 years ago i was so happening everybody loved me everything was working for me and now people look at me and they're like wow your aura is a bit dull you okay you look tired oh yeah your projects are not doing well it's just a phase and then they notice they have a lot of problems with people around them maybe a loved one maybe a girlfriend a wife or a boyfriend or a husband friends they everything just seems to be crumbling down and they don't know what it is until it's too late um and sometimes people get lucky and they have friends and family that advise them and open their mind and their eyes to certain situations and sometimes people don't and then they just suffer forever um and you know i feel really sorry for them because our industry is just, it's full of that a lot of people that i've been around i've noticed i can feel that they have that energy which is unfortunate um I mean, I As don't in, say anything because it's not my business. But it's stained with nazar. That's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Maybe what I meant by my question was who has like the. Uh, it would. It, who would be more like um, sensitive to it? No, the no, most. No. I meant who has the strongest aura. Strongest for, for me, aura. Like, I'll, I'll oh. answer it from my hmm. perspective. Maybe hmm. I'll explain my question hmm. better. Uh, at Baba Siddiqui's iftar hmm. party, hmm. I saw Shah Rukh Khan briefly, maybe for like. 10 seconds he walked past me i have never sensed that kind aura of a, ever. Yeah, yeah powerful aura around yes, him. i felt like yeah. his aura and maybe all this is in my mind or no, maybe it's, it's not, not. It's true. yeah it's uh, true it was at least 20 feet tall and 20 feet wide yes yeah, i know i understand what you mean yeah like that it, heavy and yeah. you you see the body language and motions of human beings around him change when he's walking mm-hmm, through a corridor mm-hmm. and he's very aware of it mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. he enjoys it mm-hmm. and he walks right through rightly so right of course obviously this is what he worked towards yeah that's what he worked towards and it's also god given yeah he didn't buy it from the yeah. supermarket you know <laughs> it's god given and when he, when he became aware of it um and he understood the responsibility he has of it and what it brought to him he understood how to carry himself with it and it's beautiful it's special it's very very rare also i mean we have so many stars in the industry but a few of them carry an almost um larger than life aura do you think shahrukh khan is probably in the top 5 most famous people in the world 100% right i don't think i know it's it's a fact like while you were growing up in canada You knew Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah, for sure. Of course, Canada. Forget about Canada. Canada, we can say it makes sense because it's a cosmopolitan place. We have a lot of Indians, a lot of South Asians. Um, but all of Africa, all of the countries in Africa would know who Shah Rukh Khan is, be it Morocco because we grew up watching his films, right? Be it a family in Somalia, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Senegal, in Egypt in any of these places these are all countries in in Africa in case you, nobody knew this but yeah oh, what are these geography <laughs> class <laughs> all of them would know Shahrukh Khan for sure hands down he is the ambassador of bollywood he's the ambassador of india when you were 7 years old you didn't know you'd be in india right no of course not i didn't even know i'd be in india when i was 18 yeah what 
अबाउट शाहरुख खान एंड हिंदी फिल्म अट्रैक्टेड यू इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस when you were a kid specifically shahrukh khan because for us it's his charm it's like, his charm when, when and also the kind of films he did they were the family friendly mm. you could sit at home with your entire family and watch them which is very important because that becomes a cultural thing you know um like for example here in india what are the two things people do they either go and watch cricket or they go to the cinema right so it's like a cultural thing right um we had watching films at home with family and we couldn't do hollywood films right because they were a lot of them were not appropriate to watch with the family at least if you come from a brown family you know like you, you know, know how it is the way i do yeah, kissing you know, scenes we're not we're not <laughs> open minded like that at all so bollywood films were safer they were family fa- f- friendly and also they they felt good it, it felt nice to watch a bollywood film because of the stories you know the drama the sentiments the values and Arabs, North Africans, brown like Indians, South Asians, we all share the same sentiments in the end of the day, right? And that's why films are made the way that they're made. Um and Sharu did films that you know my grandma liked, my mom liked, I liked growing up. And we had that moment where we can all sit, you know, some are sitting in the sofa, some are on the floor and we're all watching the small little TV and it's Sharu Khan. you know <laughs> so he he grew up with him you fall in love with the the romantic side of him the uh chivalry you know the gentleman side and women love that on top of that the whole idea of song and dance in a bollywood film provided a, a way of entertainment that was almost like escaping real life you know and it's just a charm about bollywood that an, other films or other industries like hollywood did not have mm. um and you know you you gravitate towards something that you relate to so we could relate to bollywood films at that time because it embodied the same things that we had in our cultures too i mean my core memory of shahrukh khan from when i was a kid was not knowing the name of this person mm-hmm. but being very attracted to the way he acts mm Like he had an innocence in his face also i don't know what friendliness i don't know yes. what it was uh, it's it's going back to energies we were talking about energies mm. he has a clean energy clean energy yes that's what it is you can see it in his eyes um you know sometimes you're like i mean shahrukh khan is so talented this has nothing to do with him but sometimes you'll see like an actor or a star and you're like i really like them but they're not that talented it's not like they have this crazy skill but there's something about them you know the way they when they smile or when their eyes there's a sparkle in their eyes that's because their energy is clean and their intent their we say in arabic niyat their niyat is like very <laughs> clean right and niyat saaf hai mm, saaf hai so iske liye you feel like gravitated towards them some mm. stars have that appeal and some of them when you see them you're like they're so talented they have everything but there's something about them that makes me feel weird inside you know that's because their energy is not that good and their intention is not that good but sharukh khan has that clean soul and i look at me talking about him like i know him like that i don't know him like that i seen him just a couple of times you know but um i have a lot of respect for him because the, the couple of times i saw him he was very respectful he was very very warm very nice despite knowing that he could be the fourth third or fifth most famous person in the world right or most impactful influential person in the world um when i've met other stars who have not been like that who've been very disrespectful very mean without taking names what mm-hmm. was the form of disrespect um just like kind of like borderline bullies like you said know? something that yeah they'll they'll be their body language won't be very welcoming their facial expressions their taunting their jokes their you know they'll say things behind your back also and you and you get to know what they said and you're like wow i can't believe they said that about me um and they have that that entitlement of being bullies and nobody will call them out on that men or women men yeah women is a different story women will try to kill you like <laughs> they'll try to kill you so that's a different story but men who are superstars because we're talking about a superstar like shahrukh khan right so if i'm going to compare him to anyone i'll compare him to other superstars right um so yeah he's been amazing you felt bad of course i'd feel bad yeah of course I, I, the yeah. reason i'm asking you that yeah no yeah go for it is cuz 
I feel even you have a clean energy. Yeah, thank you. But you're you. very sharpened up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. Yeah, going back for sure. To the yeah. Start. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think your clean energy would feel bad, but then your sharp energy would just be like, oh, okay, this is another. Yeah, obviously, like I will cry for like ten minutes at home, and then after that, I'd be like, girl, get yourself up. We have things to do. We have to take over the world. You know. So- <laughs> I'm I'm really I'm fascinated by like your experiences. Uh, I I believe that to grow in life you have to leave home. You've left a whole country. Mm. Like it's not normal what you've done. It's very cool. Thanks. And despite I'm sure you've seen a lot of shit while getting to this point. Mm-hmm. So my question to you is did this happen recently? What exactly? Them bullying you. Oh yeah, all the time. Even now. Even now. Yeah, even now because I'm intimidating in the end of the day. Some people don't get it. They don't understand like how come her? Why not our girls? Why not this one? Why not my girl? Why not my, you know, why her? There's so much of that that happens and they get so angry and they don't also a lot of them don't like my directness. I'm very direct, you know. I'm not like the other girls who would be like, <laughs> "Yes, sir." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not like I will come, I will joke with you, I will, you know, you're my homie. I will tell you in your face if I feel like something is off. Um I'll be frank. I'll also be the most amazing person for you. I'll help you in anything that you need. I'm like like going back to my hood Jane and Finch and how I was up, brought up in my friend circle we ride with each other I'm a rider literally like that sounds funny but you know in terms of like if you need something I'm there right but at the same time if you're effing up I'll tell you or if I feel like something is weird I'll say it I'll be the one in the room who, who would say the most awkward thing but some people they don't like that they they prefer they prefer someone quiet, submissive, someone who looks like they really need work or they really want something. So then you give them the ability to be more powerful and to be able to have the control of certain situations. I don't give that to anybody. And that's used by turning theory into practice. Yeah, of course. Then they'll say things like, "Oh, she's nothing. She's nobody. She's a fall. She's not talented. Why is she here?" That 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 that. All that happens, you know. And then and then they see you again, you know, with them in certain events, or um, they seem to not be able to brush you off. Wherever they go, you're there too. Maybe because you were invited also, or you're also doing the same job as them, or whatever it is, and it irritates them more. You know, what is this? So they feel like you're slowly going up at, and reaching where they are and they don't want that. So then they start to bully you, demean you, talk bad about you, almost to cover your aura with their negative blanket. Um, and sometimes people succumb to that blanket and then they drown in it. And then some people like me would just like throw it off again and be like, all right. What's going on? You know what I mean? So, Are you okay saying these things on a podcast? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because you're speaking the truth. You're speaking the truth yeah. that audiences know. You're speaking the truth that uh, most media professionals know. Mm-hmm. People why don't not? say these why, things Why openly. would I not be? Look, people are okay to talk shit about me all the time. All the time. And nobody thinks about how I feel. You think I don't see what they write about me on Reddit? Reddit is is wild. They say the craziest shit about me. I see the comment sections. I see uh, the articles, the blind articles. I see what people say about me all the time. And I sit and I'm like, oh, they know I'm going to see this. And they never think twice about how I'm going to feel, my mental health. They don't think twice about whether it's real or not. It's false. I see the tweets. I see, you know, these random self-proclaimed critics or self-proclaimed bloggers or whatever they want to call themselves. They, they go and they tweet things that are not right. They're wrong. They're lies. And that damages my reputation. And it makes people talk so much crap about me. And I can't even say, hey, guys, it's not true. I can't even say that. I just watch it happen. So I see how they have all the balls to do that. And they don't face repercussion. They don't get canceled. Nobody says anything to them. I And I know I have a very open personality and I'm very spontaneous and I'm open book. So when I'm on a podcast, I, I talk freely because I want people to know who I am. I can't even count the internet rumors that have spread lies about me. Mm -hmm. And at one point I used to feel a sense of, huh, why? Why this? 
Where is this coming from? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, at this stage, I have two phones. Mm-hmm. So one phone gives me the internet rumor. Okay. The other one shows me my numbers. Yeah. On for social sure. media. And yeah. I'm sure you feel the same way. On one side, yeah, of course, because I'm like, make it make sense. I mean, if if I'm so horrible and I'm not talented and I'm done certain things just to get the opportunities that I have, they explain the numbers. explain the 1 billion 1.5 billion the 4 billion views the 500 million views explain the 46 million followers explain the opportunities that i have been able to um to nail explain the 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 fan following explain the young girls and boys are crazy about me explain all that you know has a big star crossed the line with you uh you have to be specific <clears throat> i understand the bullying Mm-hmm. thing and that's mm-hmm. also crossing a line mm-hmm. has someone i mean i'm going in a casting couch direction yeah sexually no no luckily no luckily i've not had that situation but i know why because i had this conversation with my friend the other day and she was like do you ever think about why that's never happened with you and i'm like yeah i do think that it could have almost happened but my personality is a little intimidating so the they kind of get a little bit like are iske sath nahi because she could talk they, these kind of people whether they're stars or not in the end of the day inherently they're predators inherently let's be frank right okay. they are you're saying it doesn't have to be a star it could be a star mm. it could be a non star it could be anybody but what i'm trying to say is when they start to use as a way to bait you into work and to make you submissive right they are inherently predators here right so those predators if you look at how their brain works it's very interesting they sniff out victims they scan you and they know your personality and they know which one to use and which one not to use to protect themselves like if you're a predator and you're going to and you're about to approach someone you're not going to approach someone that has a certain personality trait that could get you in trouble right you'll be very smart you'll be calculative and you're going to approach the vulnerable one the desperate one the one whose personality is a little bit meek and scared sometimes not all the time right sometimes they get it wrong their calculation is wrong and they approach the wrong one who exposes them and destroys their empire that happens but most of the time they know who to approach and i i i felt certain moments where i'm like eh, this person might but then they back off because they're like me nee. not her her personality is is a little bit scary and and i can see it i see i talk a lot you know um i come with a certain aura when i when you approach me when i walk into a room i don't give i've never given desperate vibes at all i've been in situations where i've wanted work but i've and there had like for example initial days when i first came to india in 2013 14 i think it's 2013 my dates are all over the place but there was somebody who tried to put me in the situation of if you want this then you have to do this and kind of corner me and put me in this very scary situation where i panicked and i felt alone and and i didn't know how how to handle the situation i don't have to go into detail about what happened but i do remember some switch in my brain what came and i was like hey listen I don't you think I really want this that bad. I don't. I'm here it happens great. It doesn't happen. I go back to Canada. I didn't come from some village. I go back from Canada. I go back there. I go back to university and I'll go back and study law or study teaching and become a lawyer or a teacher. And what this doesn't happen so what? So when you suddenly do that because when I did that I suddenly felt that person was like, "Oh shit, she took the power away from me. Now what do I do? I can't dangle anything." because she doesn't really want it so they give up right that's the situation i was in um obviously whatever advice or whatever thing i'm telling you is based on my life experience i don't know other people have different life experiences and different notions about it but this is my take about it so afterwards moving on in life whenever i was in a situation like that or i felt like it's going to happen i noticed people back off because they're like her character her personality who cannot handle it for sure and then i've had friends who went through it and those friends of mine are a little more shy, a little more reserved, a little more quiet, and i felt like those kind of predators must have thought that they were much more is eas- not easier but it's more safer for them to do what they wanted to do with them. Yeah. For sure. See, I'm a guy, so there's mm-hmm. only a level of understanding that i can bring to this conversation, but mm-hmm. i'm trying to understand this further. Mhm. 
from a girl's perspective mm-hmm. um you're talking about your friends who are slightly more submissive or Not quiet submissive, or submissive but like you know you they vulnerable well nice they're just nice people i sometimes i'm not that nice you know what i mean i i can be a bitch you know <laughs> i'm not even going to lie sometimes i'm like why am i like this but i am i'm like this you know i'm i i come and attack hmm. to my words to my demeanor and it's just the hustler vibe of side of mine from back in the day that's why i'm like this but it scares people sometimes especially these kind of people because of that feel i mean if it's actually a superstar that's being a predator or mm-hmm. a massive producer or a director that's mm-hmm. being a predator mm-hmm. are there girls who unwillingly given yeah oh listen a lot of people be like well why did she go why did she meet that person or why was she wearing what she was wearing or why was she uh, entertaining this the situation in the end of the day whether you're a man or a woman and somebody proposes to you these kind of things in exchange for something immediately you are put in a situation where you can't say no and they know this so most people 90% of people that say that just go for it or do whatever they do it's because they were not given a choice and those people know they're not giving you a choice if they're saying you really want it that bad you really need work that bad you really need to, um and it's not just our industry uh ranveer it's in all industries by the way and not just industries it could happen in the most most um random situations and you're just like people sniff out vulnerable people in desperate situations and if you really need money or if you need to work or if you need certain things and if they're saying it you need to do this for this automatically you have no choice and they know that couple of things that i want to say firstly your 46 million followers on instagram are also an armor for sure in for terms sure, of finance yes. and that's what a lot of young professionals need to understand especially in media mm-hmm. everyone's a content creator now 100% yeah uh, i mean i am too i make money from youtube i make money from content i put out you know i pray that you get everything that you want thank you but in saying that even if you never sign a film mm-hmm. you're financially going to take care of yourself forever oh yeah for sure because Oh, not just because of those forty-six million people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but that's a massive part of your 100%. finances. That's why I. But here's the thing, Ranveer. Like I'm gonna tell you from when I was growing up, because you're just talking about Bollywood. I'm talking about even when I was nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, twenty. Back in the day, when I was hustling. doing all the jobs that i was doing you know from working at mcdonald's to working at a shawarma place to working at a telemarketing place and i was doing double shifts to performing at people's events i did everything right even at that time i met people who would try to corner me or dangle things in front of me and you know be like well if you want this then you need to do this and that, that wasn't even bollywood that was just the streets of of toronto you know what i mean like the most random place so as a woman uh, now even as a man at this point you will meet people who are at a powerful position and they use it to their advantage um to in exchange for something else and you have to know how to behave at that time so even at that time i never allowed any of that stuff to happen you also probably need a radar You you but you build a radar. You develop a radar. How do you that. pick up on predator energy? It's but it's a thing. It really is a thing. Especially if if you if you're in tune with your life experiences and your journey, you start to remember certain characteristics and certain things about people. And then as you grow up, you're like, I've seen this before. The truth is in the touch. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Unfriendly yeah, yeah. touch. Oh, not just that. That what to do here? It's just when they enter, when you just see them, and you're like, wait a second. What is it in the look? It tells you, ah, okay, predator. Well, if you read energies really well, you can tell from the way they look at you. You can see from their body language, um, the way they're talking. There's just the way, and sometimes they catch you off guard. Sometimes you don't even know. It, it takes a whole conversation, and then in the end of the conversation, you're like, "Oh, are these the most dangerous ones?" No, those are just. Well, they're all dangerous, right? And it's also how you make it. 
sometimes they are dangerous, but it's how you 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 behave in the situation and how you, you get yourself out of it. It just saddens me that there are people in the world that will want to use your desire for something or your situation um, to their advantage. It's very sad. How do you differentiate between a guy coming up to you with genuine nice intention mm. versus these predators? I mean, what if a guy is hitting you? Never really with you? thought about that. Um, but but you don't mind the energy of the guy. It's like positive energy. It's so hard to say now because there are so many different type of predators. There are sexual predators who want s- right, and then there are clout predators who want to use you for your clout. It's called fame for. Yeah, there is. I didn't know you could swear on the podcast. Oh my god, Binas! <laughs> Thank God, there are literally clout motherfuckers who will court you, who will do everything to make you feel like they they want you, and they actually just want your clout. They just want to use you for your fame. Guys, yes, who want to date you for your fame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm sure that's a thing. I'm just confirming. Yeah, for the sake I'm of not narrative. with me. Not with me. I mean, I t- this is fully guarded, okay? Um, and that's why you don't see me running around with guys or dating or, uh, you know, this. Oh, I think she's with this one or that. I stay alone because I gotta filter everyone and know what everyone's intention is before I allow them in my vicinity. Um, but I see it is happening in front of me. I see it in my industry. People get married for clout. People use, you know, these these um, wives or husbands for networking, for circles, for money, um, for relevancy. Kya say shadi karni hai so that I can make sure I'm relevant for the next three years because she's got a few films releasing and they were doing well in the box office. So I got to ride that wave. People are that calculative. Those are predators too, no? Don't you think? Yeah. Not everything is about s- Yeah. I think everything that a human being does... Uh, comes out of the motivation for power and money and money you know what I mean and fame also power you, That's yeah but, power. but you could be famous and not powerful you could be powerful and not famous <laughs> also right mm, so fair. It, we got to talk about four categories and the amount of the crazy stuff that guys and girls will do they will destroy their whole personal life for money fame power etc etc like nothing is worse than getting married to someone that you don't even love and living with them for years you see that around (sighs) come on now most of the people (laughs) in our industry are doing that nonsense you know just because they want to be in the right camps and circles and they want to be relevant because they don't know where their career is gonna go so they need to you know have backup plan plan a plan b plan c i totally understand being worried about your career and your and your um potential? your not potential but your your name and your brand i understand having to but i don't understand sacrificing your personal life and your mental health and your happiness because in the end of the day work is work and home life and personal life is something else you can mix both of the things together because you'll never be happy and then you wonder why you're depressed and you know suicidal and you know you can't sleep at night it's because you've mixed both things together unnecessarily due to greed and bad intentions your intentions were wrong to begin with so i see this all the time and i'm like this is crazy i understand working hard to to stay where you are in the industry, Um, you know, doing multiple things in the industry, maybe acting, singing, this, 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 to stay relevant and make money. I understand trying to build a a proper network base and and being a part of certain camps, but that's, then you got to work towards those things, right? But to start making personal life decisions because of clout and stuff, I think it's like a predator. It's, it's almost predatory, for sure. Because the other person doesn't even know you're doing this. The other person thinks you love them and you're married to them or you love them and you're dating them or Joby and actually you have something else going on. That is scary. There's a younger version of me that would have said, you know what, this is probably the substitute for a, a lack of discipline and hard work and self-belief. That The fact that you have to think about plan B in the first place. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm older, I kind of know that destiny plays a role at least that's what I've learned through the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't believe that destiny is the ultimate thing. 
Mm-hmm. I think that of course it's like half hard work, mm-hmm. half fate, luck, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is why I just question these realities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it the fact that they've tried with everything that they had, all the discipline that they had, and then they're forced to do this, or the fact that you forced know, to what be a predator? No, forced to marry for clout and uh, forced to alter their personal lives for the sake of their careers. That mm. is possibly the biggest sacrifice that I can think of on a human level. Other than trading your soul with the devil. No, I just think that too. Of course, there's a lot of people who sell their soul for the devil. They sell their soul for everything. Um, <laughs> but there are also some of them. Some do, do of you them just have really destiny. Of course, I believe in you, destiny. It's a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like the events are planned. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. you can everything do is, is yeah. Focus. I I believe everything is written. Yes. Yeah. Your job is just to like work hard, stay disciplined, mm-hmm. stay focused, etc. Mm-hmm. And then you mm-hmm. expect that destiny will do the yes job. Yeah, and I think there's sure. an element of karma. Be a kind person. Yeah. yeah, and 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 then you said, for example, then destiny doesn't play the way you want it to be played. So then maybe they might do the things that we just discussed. But you have to have a different type of spirit to pl- act even off camera. Because technically you're acting, right? You've made certain decisions. You've dragged certain people in those decisions and you're playing a role for money or for a career or for fame or for relevancy. Some of them just want to be relevant, you know? Um, Why? Because they're fucking crazy. Because, like- because it's a drug, right? Like fame is a drug. Money is a drug. If you don't have self-control, if you're not disciplined, if you don't fear God, there's a lot of things that come into play. Then the devil himself in fame will attack. And when he attacks, he will take control of your spirit and your mind and your morals and your values. So suddenly you start making certain decisions and doing things in your life that go against your morals and values. And you don't even care anymore because you're like, I need the money. I need the fame. I need to be relevant. I need to stick around. I need to be here. I need to. It's crazy. Had you had the discipline, self-control, the fear of God, the faith, et cetera, et cetera, you would be able to balance the importance of money, fame, work, relevancy with real life and realize that this is great. I have this or I had this, but I cannot sell myself and my entire life for this forever because this is not forever. What remains forever is you, your person, your thoughts, your actions, your good deeds, your spirit, your faith. All of these things remain forever. Your relationships with people, what good and bad you've did, how many people you've helped. You've, you, have you left a lasting positive mark on someone's life? These are the things that matter, right? Fame and all these things, they're great. Look, I'm famous. I have money too. I've got the success and I have people who admire me and I'm doing all the things I've always wanted to do. I'm fulfilling my dreams. This is all great, but I'm doing this in the cleanest way possible by working really hard really hard, giving all my time and effort, building on my skill, working on myself and being good to people. That's it. But I'm not manipulating and making decisions in my life and manipulating the people around me to get these things done. This is where I'm like, bro, you're fucking crazy. (laughs) I miss my childhood. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Sometimes I'm like, I miss my childhood too. You know, isn't it so crazy that when we're kids, we want to grow up and become adults so quickly. And we're like, Gosh, may maybe you know uh, heels painting, yeah, makeup lagating, yeah, whatever. We see all these these things, and then and then we grow up and we're adults, and we're like, eh, it wasn't that great. Mm. I might want to go back to being a kid. You're desperate to be an adult when you're a kid. Mm, it's so crazy. Some of these kids, I'm like, shut up, stay being a kid and enjoy it while it lasts, because you're gonna have to pay taxes and bills when you get older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you're 18 or 22, you have that wake up call, and mm. then you really, really, really miss being a kid. Yeah, I had mine when I was 16. That was my wake up call. I'm like, began working. Ugh, with... Yeah, my mm. first job. You're also 93. Mm-hmm. I'm 93. I'm 92, but yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Like kind of same. But it's fine, give or when, take. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you when you meet people in that same age range. At least for me, nowadays, I I connect very deeply with that specific age bracket because we've all seen the same quantum of trauma. 
Yeah. In different ways. Are you traumatized too? Yeah, of course. Oh my god, me too. Oh my god, I have a lot of trauma. <laughs> I don't yeah. think one can chase fame mm-hmm. without trauma being the precursor mm. or or you're born in like a a fame oriented environment. It's one of the two. Mm. There has to be something that makes you want to have this kind of attention on yourself this much. For sure, you want validation, you want constant validation, you want um Yeah, it's the word validation. That's what it is. Did you want to be famous when you were a kid? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Of course. Same. Yeah, yeah. The same thing. It was so scary how much I wanted. I forced the whole school to make me famous. I've not met <laughs> a single like famous person who doesn't say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, like I, yeah, I have never met someone who's like, no, I never wanted fame, <laughs> and then I woke up one day and be- wanted to be famous. It's always like bachpan se. Always, like I remember vividly seeing. I don't even know where these tapes are anymore. I was asking my mom the other day, but homemade videotapes, right? Recording tapes, and I remember seeing my mom or someone, my dad or someone from the family recording me in a in a family function, like a wedding or an engagement or whatever. And I'm in the middle of the crowd, demanding everyone's <laughs> attention, watching me dance, and. If I don't get the claps and all that, I'll start crying. And if my mom drags me from that center, I'll throw a huge fit, like ah! mm. and throw myself on the floor like a crazy person. And then I'm only happy when I run back to the circle and I'm like <laughs> dancing. Everyone's like, "Yeah, what? Yeah, what?" And then I'm like, "Yeah." So that's scary. I was three, you know, four. Like, what was I doing? Asking for validation from the crowd. <laughs> Oh man. Story of every social media star at least and mm-hmm. generally again every famous person. I I have met some people who kind of becoming famous who say that they're not enjoying it and kind of want to leave and they were always the people who didn't want the fame. Mm. This, so this, what did they want exactly the success? Probably they didn't know what they wanted. That's true. I, I agree there are people like that um you know but also you know that a lot of people who are famous also have the person personality trait that wants them to be famous like like you have it in you where you um not want it, the attention but want the admiration you know sometimes not all good not all attention is good attention right but you want the admiration and you want the the claps They, that's a personality trait I don't know what you call that. I don't. I hope it's not narcissism, because <laughs> then we're fucked. Not narcissism. Any famous person goes to. We're probably narcissists, dude. Oh my god, I don't know what it is, but it's a personality trait. Two narcissists can't date each other. I heard. And two narcissists can be really good friends also because really? you understand each other's bullshit. Mm, interesting. Right? I don't think it's look. There's. borderline narcissism hey i understand that to be a star and all that and 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 be okay with fame it's there a little bit hold us i have um but if you're aware of it then you know how to control it i think there's another personality trait that a performer has i don't know if it's the same for like a social media star or an maybe for an actor also but you know um the ability to put on a show and create an illusion yeah mm. and ha- and have the audience kind of mesmerized and gravitate towards you and really like enjoy what you're doing and have their attention there's a personality trait i'm still trying to figure out what that is but not all not all stars have that also by the way have you ever read your own astrological chart by any chance mm-hmm. yeah okay we just had an astrologer on the show recently okay i don't know how uh, deeply into so he was a vedic astrologer and he taught me what kind does that of mean? like the indian system okay okay of like reading the hindu system of okay, reading okay. it mm-hmm. uh and the way he explained it like atharva who's like a producer mm-hmm. he's a very like scientific thinking oriented right. yes, and yes, all yes. of us were convinced after that no episode way. that guy was that good a speaker but there was also a lot of truth in what he was what saying what did he say which was for you a game changer um so i've been exposed to vedic astrology a lot because of the show people i met friends excels mm-hmm. like so i kind of had an idea about it mm. this guy was just able to you can really break down the personality of someone like through that chart because it's very very detailed mm. but you need to know your birth time and do you know your birth time uh no i got to okay. ask yeah uh but it's it's pretty accurate at least from a personality perspective okay like the, so this is quite deep This is yeah, not yeah, like yeah. your uh because you asked me about astrology you just wake up and you see what the Aquarius <laughs> is what is this it's not that it's more deep 
all that's also deep but that's like kind of generalizing it it's like the trailer of the movie hmm. the movie would be these deep astrological charts okay, crazy. i believe there are arabic and gregorian charts also which have their own systems interesting but you need to be educated in that it's all based on the same mm. thing it's mm. based on astronomy mm-hmm. position right. of stars right stars yeah so basically in the in the vedic chart they draw out 12 uh sections of the sky okay. can they call it 12 houses and each of those represents a bunch of things mm-hmm. then depending on where the planets are placed you can kind of tell something of the personality of the person or their relationship with the father or the mother or the hmm. children hmm. the wife etc husband hmm. etc um the first house the core one represents who you are on the inside like what is your personality interesting so mine is something called rahu okay okay which is a planet that doesn't actually exist there are two mm. planets in the whole uh system which don't exist mm. so they don't count neptune and uh uranus mm. but they count rahu and ketu which are not real planets uh but it's also i mean there's theories about what rahu and ketu are some people say it's like a black hole around the solar system interesting but if rahu's in your first house mm-hmm. uh who you are on the inside is mystery and illusion and usually with people in media it's about illusion we were talking about something about illusion you said that that trait Uh-huh. And after the narcissism conversation, about, uh, I was wondering about what that personality trait is that makes you uh, captivate the audience and yeah. have their attention. Have you seen and perform uh, the Spider-Man movie with Mysterio? No. Uh, so in Spider-Man, there's a villain called Mysterio. His superpower is that he's able to create very elaborate illusions, and okay. it confuses Spider-Man. Okay. That's exactly what a uh, media career is. Interesting. On many levels, whether it's as simple as altering an instagram post or caption to look a certain way mm. or acting where mm-hmm. whole body language mm-hmm. alters mm-hmm. and you and you embody a different character we're all shape shifters for sure yeah definitely that's the core of this career mm. you you get paid to be a shape shifter for sure yeah so yeah. i i mean i wouldn't be surprised if even you had rahu honestly because it's related to, check, to fame yeah. it gives mm. you potential to get fame there are other plans and even venus is related to fame but okay. venus is in the first house i think is also related to the luxurious aspect of hmm. fame. Interesting. Yeah, like glam some, and stuff. Yeah, like someone like Kylie Jenner would be like a uh-huh. very perfect Venus in the first house. That's what I think. I don't know shit about astrology. No, but it kind of makes sense. But interesting. Mm. I love that. Should get your like chart read once just to like know about yourself. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. again, the core of astrology is that it all can be changed through hard work and good karma. Mm-hmm. Uh but this is what's likely to happen. That's why I've opened myself up to it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Is I'm I mean it's good to be open to receive new information and learn. Um I feel like I was telling you initially in the beginning of our podcast like we have to be alert and we have to gain knowledge especially in our industry and if you're a public figure. Um what's the most difficult alone time thought that you have hmm it's hard because i'm almost at the time i'm alone so and i've wired my brain which might not be a good thing but since the age of 16 even when i'm alone i'm just thinking about what's next what do i do next okay what do i do okay so i got to do this 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 project that project this 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 is how my brain is constantly um I've not had moments to sit and have empty thoughts or no no yeah never like even right now we're talking but i'm also in the back of my head thinking about okay what do i got to do for the next couple of weeks that is going to be you know what's going to help me in my career for the next one year like i'm constantly thinking calculating doing this that 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 it's 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 insane my brain works in a different level altogether i i don't give time for myself to think about oh i'm feeling sad today because this boy didn't message me <laughs> you know or oh my god i missed my best friend's birthday i don't i just don't think i really it takes me a long time to get into a situation like oh recently i was doing an interview and in that interview in the middle of it i'm looking outside of the window and i'm remin- reminiscing about my past and about like the struggle of bombay when i first came and how i might need therapy how did i come to that conclusion in the middle of an interview that's because i don't give time for my brain to process things at all i don't even process my success sometimes it's really crazy like when i said to you that um what bothers me the most is that i have to constantly prove myself and one of the reasons or the main reason is because only i know 
all the sacrifices I've made in my life. Only I know all the sacrifices I made in my personal life. And when I look at all those sacrifices, I'm like, boss, like I did all this for my dream and I still am having a hard time to get people to be convinced or to get people to see me or to give me chances and opportunities and to believe in me. And and when I look at all those sacrifices I made, I'm like, oh, damn. It's crazy. I'll never get that time back. I'll never get those moments back. I've missed so many things. You know, I've ha- there was times where I haven't seen my family in years. Um, there's a whole, you know, gap of time that's gone. Like I've missed my friends' birthdays. When I talk about my friends, they're not like friends or normal friends. These are like family. I grew up with them. I went to school with them. They're like my sisters. I miss their their marriages their birthdays i've missed moments in life with them their childbirth their first childbirth their engagements their anniversaries i've missed my brother's wedding i've missed the birth of his sons i've missed moments with my mom i've missed moments with my other brother i've missed their graduations i've missed their birthdays i've missed everything in the span of 10 years chasing my dream and thankfully it's not been, you know, wasted. I have made a name. I am successful. I've broken barriers. I've broken stereotypes. I've inspired a lot of people. Um, but is it enough for you? It's never going to be enough. You know, it's not like I'm, I'm here talking about going global. You know, I just signed a global record deal with Warner America and Global Warner Global, and I'm working towards my international career. I want to be global. But of course, that's going to come with so many sacrifices. Again, I might have to sacrifice my personal life, which I am currently doing. I mean, I don't focus on my personal life at all. I don't take vacations. I don't date. I don't go partying. I don't... You, you think it'll take away from your time? Um. Yeah, 100%. That's why you don't date? Oh, no. Um. Maybe. Maybe it might take away my attention, my drive, my fire. Because in order to reach the success I'm reaching and do the things that I do, it requires full, undivided attention. And it requires that. Have you had a bad experience with someone? Yeah, of course I did. Yeah. Is that the reason you don't want to date now? Um probably there there i'm not gonna say there's only one reason i'm not gonna say it's only because i want to be focused on my career yes i want to be focused entirely on my career and i want to make everything come true and i want to be super successful and i want to prove so many people wrong i have that fire in me but a part of it is because i had a, a terrible experience with someone who which people was cheated on. um it's not like that no it's worse you know, it's, it's way worse. Yeah, it's way worse because Le- wait, people are always getting cheated on, by the way, on a daily basis. I don't know. So it's not that. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what you've been through. Yeah. Just as a friend. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You've won the breakup. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. So. I have won the breakup or whatever that was. I don't know if it was a breakup. <laughs> it was It was just a very weird, weird experience. I don't wish that on anyone. So it's not your generic oh, this person cheated, this person broke up. No, it's something deeper, darker, scarier. It was... Someone conned you? It was... I wish it was that. It was terrible. I don't wish that on anyone. But I got out of that safe alive. Um, and after that, I was like, no, I need to protect my aura. I need to protect my spirit. I need to protect me. So now I have a barrier around me and it's very hard to get through that very hard you have to be i don't know what to get through to that and i prefer that i prefer because i want to be safe i want i like i sacrifice so much for my career why would i allow some fuck all human to destroy that for me so that's why i created this barrier and i don't focus on all this instead i work really hard to make my fans happy to make my friends and family proud of me and to prove all the haters wrong do you believe in love yeah of course i do like romantic i believe love. in love i believe in um god i believe in all these nice things i don't believe in humans <laughs> it's true do you do you believe in the goodness of men um i believe in 
giving them chances and trying, but I don't believe that they're perfect. Yes, definitely believe. And that, and also women, women are crazy. <laughs> they're not perfect either. Um, but I don't believe in humans. That's why I use the word humans. We had Nina Gupta on the show and she said something interesting. She said that uh, both men and women need to realize that they need each other. For sure. They do, do need think, each do other. Do you think that's true? Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe another mm-hmm. way of... Mm-hmm. Yeah, this idea of like, I don't need anybody and feminism and not. Nah, I don't believe in this shit at all. In, in fact, I think fem- feminism fucked up our society completely. And the idea of being inherently completely independent and not having to get married and have kids and not having the male and female dynamics in the home where the man is a pri- provider and a breadwinner and the woman is a nurturer. I don't believe in people who think that that's not true. I think women are nurturers. Um, yes, they should go to work and have their own life and be independent. But to a certain extent, they should also be ready to take on the role of being a mother and a wife and a nurturer, just like a man should be ready to take a role of being a provider and a breadwinner and a father and a husband. I believe totally on this. We call it old school, traditional way of thinking. I think I call it the normal way of thinking. It's just feminism fucked it up a little bit and made us really excited about this whole like freedom and liberation and everyone's equal. We are all equal in more more sentimental things, but in societal things, we are not equal. I think everyone plays their role. Yeah. Um, another part of the Nina Gupta podcast was about how, she, I think she was basically talking about the nature of the uterus Mm-hmm. And how it actually changes the physiology of the human body. Mm-hmm. And just the presence of the uterus mm-hmm. and female hormones and the kind of hormonal shifts you guys have over one month mm-hmm. is so drastic. Oh yeah, for that sure. it's not built for modern society, which is actually built for men. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. jobs became a thing during the industrial revolution. It's nine to five thing. Yes, yes, yeah. This uh, happened after the industrial revolution. Yeah, you're right. Because yes. men's hormonal cycles change over a day mm-hmm. and women's hormonal cycles change over a month. I'm not a girl, mm-hmm. so I don't mm-hmm. have perspective. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I sent it to some of my smartest female friends, mm-hmm. some of whom are entrepreneurs, some of whom are actors, some everyone's successful. Uh, all of them agreed with it. Mm-hmm. They're like, this is so true. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, mm-hmm. can we play the video actually? I don't mind. Let's see yeah. it. Okay. So have a look at this, okay? Female physiology was not designed for the 8 to 5 grind. This is because our hormones operate on completely different cycles than men. Women are on a 28-day cycle and men are on a 24-hour hormone cycle. The traditional 8 to 5 workday grind is designed to accommodate men's testosterone levels and women's hormones aren't even slightly taken into consideration when it comes to this schedule. Here's how it works. Men wake up with a surge of testosterone every morning, which slowly declines throughout the day. This makes them ready to get up and get after it first thing in the morning, day after day. Women, on the other hand, are on a 28-day hormone cycle. We experience four phases within our month-long menstrual cycle, have different hormonal patterns every single day of our cycle, and only get one spike of testosterone, which occurs during ovulation. Women also need more sleep than men, are naturally more creative, and need variation in their schedules to accommodate their daily hormonal shifts. Trying to get most women to thrive in corporate settings is like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole and our bodies feel it. It's no wonder we don't fit in and easily burn out when living a corporate lifestyle. You're not broken, lazy, or not strong enough. Your hormones were just made for something different. If you're feeling like you need a slower schedule, need more time to yourself, and want a way out of the 8 to 5, nothing is wrong with you. Women are strong and capable of so many things, but we have to remember just because we can survive something doesn't mean we were made for it. Period. I totally agree with it. Sorry, I'm just seeing the comments. (laughs) Interesting. I find this very interesting. What are your thoughts on this? Honestly? I'm trying to understand it better at Mm. this stage because a lot of things that you process about the world as a guy are in binary. So it's either black or white. And as you grow older as a guy, you realize that nuance Mm. is a thing. There's a gray section. Yeah. Yeah, So at this point, I'm just trying to better my nuance, man. And I'm trying to listen to smart and successful 
female friends of mine so i'll mm. throw the ball back at you it's funny because you might ha- ask all these successful female friends of yours and each one might have their own opinion um some of them are still stuck in that feminism wave i was talking to you about which has been hammered into our heads and our upbringing um through tv through music through other female uh role models etc cetera, etc cetera. i am talking about the western upbringing not here okay here it's still a little bit less than the how extreme it is in the west right that we grew up seeing visuals hearing audios being told that you know patriarchy is bad and um men who are not uh allowing you to you know be a feminist they're bad and men are bad and you know the society is bad if it doesn't allow you to struggle in life and work 9 to 5 and uh you should not want to be a mother and have kids and get married that's all old school and so that that kind of mentality has been hammered um subconsciously in the last i'd say 20 years It's funny enough in the last 2 or 3 years i'm seeing videos like this now crop up i'm seeing people talk more on podcasts about how the society has gone to the extreme side of feminism and it's destroyed the the family unit um it's destroyed the feminine energy of a woman to want to be caring and nurturing and ho- you know create a household um and this extreme need of wanting to compete with a man and if you don't compete with a man then you're not adequate these things we put us are in a question more yeah i mean as a guy i can only speak from my experience i've dated a couple of girls who were feminists and there was a lot of differences between the two mm-hmm. one of them her career was in moving far forward okay. very quickly mm-hmm. uh and my experience there with her was negative mm, interesting uh the other one her career was moving forward and she was also a feminist and uh both would like lecture me about where mm-hmm. they thought i was going wrong mm-hmm. sure and mm-hmm. i'd take it from both but with the good one uh she would lecture me from a place of love and nurturing interesting uh with the one who's intense to deal with she she would compete with me a lot So do you notice that it this has similarity to religion that religion is a great thing but when it becomes radicalized in extreme it's dangerous so feminism is the same thing feminism inherently on the base level is great the foundation of it is great i also you know advocate for women's rights i also want girls to go to school i also believe in all these things however when feminism becomes radical which is what has happened in the last 15 to 20 years it's dangerous for the society and now the society and people are seeing the repercussion of this radicalization of feminism families are suffering kids are suffering women's mental health is suffering people it's almost like what is happening right now is that you know when you shake a coke bottle and then you open it and it goes mm. so this is happening right now um and people are fed up people are tired people are having immense anxiety they don't understand it's because they've been uh in this dog race when then they're not meant for this dog race now people want to be in their soft girl era people want to be there in feminine <laughs> energy people want to find themselves people so there's a lot of epiphanies happening right now do you think the right man can unlock a woman's true feminine yeah for you sure think, you yes you see this with your friends at least mm-hmm, with mm-hmm, yourself mm-hmm, yeah 100% yes 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 like for example i know i'll just speak about myself i have a masculine trait about me for sure because of how i kind of had to be in survival mode since day 1 and i've kind of unleashed that part of me so dominant dictator taking control can give manly vibes sometimes however um i need to do that to be able to be good you know i i have to take care of people i am the breadwinner of my family as i was telling you i take care of my friends i take care of everybody so i am the head you know of the family so inherently you you kind of give a bit of masculine energy with that with the right man who knows how to take care of me who is a provider who is a supporter and a protector i will automatically surrender and feel safe because obviously I 
with with the the space that I'm in, I don't feel safe. So I have to create this kind of energy to be safe, right? With the right man, like I said, with those characteristics I mentioned, automatically your feminine energy kicks in. Automatically, biologically, you feel like, all right, now I feel safe to do what I'm meant to do. Can we break down the right man thing a little bit better? Yeah, sure. That's how I figured, I mean, how to be better as a guy okay. through questions like this. Okay, so first of all, you as a man needs to tap into your masculine energy. Let's start there because I feel like our society right now with what's going on, uh, a lot of the factors in our environment have led to men losing their masculine energy, which is a problem for us women who are looking for men with masculine energy, right? An easy way of hmm. quantifying this, mm-hmm. not quantifying or like an example of this would be guys not taking care of their fitness. There hmm. you go. Maybe. Okay. That's what, one thing. What else? Okay. Masculine energy comes in different forms, right? It could be physical. It could be emotional. It could be mental, right? You can take care of yourself physically and go to the gym and you look like a man with great masculine energy, but here it's zero, and if here it's zero, that I have, I, you can't provide me anything. So masculine energy, the one I'm talking about, where you become someone who can hold a house down, who can have a family, who can become a provider, you have to change the way you think. You have to be ready to be a provider. You have to be ready to be a supporter. And you have to be ready to take the protective role in the society. A lot of men don't want to do that anymore. You see that with guys? No, no, not anymore. A lot of men don't want to do that anymore. Like they don't want to take care of a family and they don't want to Yeah, they, they don't. They don't. A lot of men now have also been brainwashed in the feminism era who are like, oh, all right, cool. You want equality? All right, let's be equal, equal in everything. Let's be equal in, in the protection department, in the providing department, in the home, in the emotional department. Now men want to compete with women in everything, which is wrong. I think everyone needs to play their role. If a man can work on being more of a provider and more of a protector, the women then need to focus on being more of the nurturers. Everyone brings something to the table. So if you're bringing to the table money, food, shelter, I need to bring to the table kids, being a mother, taking care of the house, cooking etc etc because if we're both bringing the same thing to the table then who's going to bring the other stuff do you understand what i'm trying to say but this is of course a very old school traditional way of thinking but i believe in this and i think it's coming back i think every guy at least that i know also believes in what you're saying even girls trust me even girls eventually when girls start going out in the workforce and they struggle and they hustle and they see that how crazy the world is and they get older and they become more mature and they see life experiences they start to realize what's more important they start to realize what role they want to play what they're more happier doing they start to be more in in touch with their hormones with what biology says right there's one thing what the tv says what the society says and then what your body and what your chemicals and your and your system is telling you our system tells us to be nurturers whether we like it or not it's very cool that nora fateh is saying this i mean there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna disagree with me like your comment section is gonna be like ah oh, she's old school she's a hypocrite etc i'm not I, I, I genuinely believe what is a fact is a fact. What you decide to do with your life, that's a different story. But what is a fact is a fact. And I do genuinely believe that once we are ready to accept this, the equilibrium in the society is going to come back to how it is. All this chaos is happening is because of, of this extreme, extreme way of thinking, extreme way of doing things, extreme ideologies. Once we come back to moderation, the balance happens, people will be less in- uh, depressed, people will have less anxiety, and things will make more sense in life. I almost felt like someone who I had an experience mm-hmm. with, that girl, because her life wasn't in place, she had become sexist towards all men because she had a lot of stuff going on with her mm-hmm. father. Mm-hmm. And that trauma would make its way to me. <laughs> yes, of course it will. Of course. What do you think? think Not just you, but the man, the next man, and the man after that. Like, I've had female guests come on the show way back who've literally said, all men are assholes, all men are shit. Mm -hmm. And we've not uploaded that episode. (laughs) This is like, but why not? Why didn't you upload it? Because I feel like, um, 
I mean, I can see why you did it. But at the same time, it could have been a great eye opener to a lot of people to see that, hey, we're having a problem in our society. If women are thinking like this and speaking like this, boss, problem kya hai exactly? Yeah. It's probably my seventh recording. I wasn't nuanced enough ah. to even like debate with her because when she said that, it, there was like six guys in the room with Awkward. her recording the podcast. And they're like, bro, we're, we're men. <laughs> yeah. And again, guys are also... kind of complex you know at mm-hmm. least the modern mm-hmm. guy is mm-hmm. not as simple as our fathers generation that's true yes like yes. we have dealt with our own fair share of shit also of course yes Because i agree the pressure on guys is about earning it money it is crazy it is about it's about being a provider yes yeah. definitely but don't you think that as a man when you're working towards being a provider knowing that on the other side there's a woman working at being a nurturer isn't that going to make it much easier for you to work towards being a provider more just, motivational just that sentence gave me goosebumps that other part is missing which makes it more crazier and difficult for you guys i i totally sympathize i understand that's where we got to come in and work on the better half of this equation you guys work at being better providers and we work at being better supporters and nurturers and essentially in the end of the day mothers because that's what we're going to end up being most of us most of us there are some people who probably don't care about this <laughs> but i'm just talking about the society as a general uh you know that this is going to be clipped up by the internet not by my mm-hmm. team mm-hmm. it's going to make its way to social media pages mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and some of the top comments are going to be oh look at nora for she has so much pick me energy a lot of people don't care about what comes out of my mouth um because they don't expect the things that come out of my mouth but um you you've not done enough podcasts also on honestly no i probably did like one or two yeah but because people don't and... ask me the right questions so yeah and... you know, you're really street smart dude yeah i mean the survival definitely. skills definitely no definitely that's one thing oh. i know i am is street smart and i'm also no filter and i i'm not someone who's going to say things because it makes you feel better so i, I don't have pick me energy in fact <laughs> In fact, I have the more other energy where it's like, oh my god, what is she about to say? Oh, like my whole team is probably outside freaking out because they know that this has no filter. But look, honestly, it's great to have these kind of conversations because it also teaches people not to uh stereotype. A, you know, like when you judge a book by its cover, mm. just because a certain person looks a certain way or, you know, you cannot just be like oh they probably have this kind of mentality i have a certain kind of mentality because i'm educated i went through life i my brain absorbs in a way i i i'm able to, i've seen different kind of lives it's like like a cat with nine lives i've seen mm. different kind of lives i've lived in different types of places with different types of people i'm educated not even in the school sense but in in other senses too like i don't want to get into it but hence why i'm able to speak the way i speak hence why i am someone that people should listen to what i'm saying because i've lived these experiences and i'm able to tell you that boss like we're having a problem right now and we have to fix it and this is how i think we're going to fix it um but yeah i mean whatever <laughs> <laughs> You don't have pick me energy. Have, don't pick me. Yeah, energy. I'm just like Cholo, yar. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> you know, J E N A J. That's your problem, right? And it's like, but that's that's the beauty of in the internet. If you don't like what someone's saying, just scroll. That's it. Don't. Get... I, I see why people would find you intimidating. I'm not just talking about guys here. Just people yes. in general. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm. I mean, it is what it is. But I'm glad we had this conversation because um, I'm sure there are a lot of guys and women sitting at home right now trying to figure themselves out, trying to obviously make other people happy, make the society happy, but they're not happy inside and they don't know what it is. And maybe this could provide maybe a bit of a light in the end of the tunnel to figure it out. You know, there's a theory behind why podcasts have taken off all over the world. Uh, no one knows for sure, but everyone assumes that it's because loneliness has increased in the world. Oh yeah, so much, so much. Do you feel lonely at all? Um, during the lockdown, I felt lonely <laughs> <laughs> because I was locked in my house alone for how, however months we were locked. Right, it was just me and my walls. Now. Now it's hard to feel lonely because I'm constantly around people. Like it's my job to be around a crowd, around staff, team, um audience, production. I'm constantly around humans. Um do I feel like 
I'm trying to think about where I want to go with this now. Yes, like I'm thinking about my personal life more than ever. Um, Your personal life? Yes, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like thinking about... Are you dating someone? No, no, I'm You're not. You're single? Yeah, yeah, I'm single. I'm so, single. so I'm just trying to figure out how to let those walls down again. You know, the ones that I built because of the experience I had. I'm trying to figure out how to screen people more you know, read them a little more, uh, not allowing dangerous people in my, in my environment, in my surroundings. And I'm also trying to figure out what I want. Okay. What do I want from a man besides the things that we discussed, the basic things, where can I find them? You know what I mean? Because like we said, there's very few now who have this mentality. A lot of them now are like, whatever, I'm just going to compete with a girl and whatever it is it is what it is yeah of course a lot of them are also tired of competing and trying to stick to the societal norms and it's a tough world that we live in today so i'm trying to figure out what kind of person i want where how am i going to do this trying to figure out i have this love for my career but i also want to be a mom I also want to be a wife. I also want to take care of my home. So I have to think about how I'm going to balance both of them because I also want to take over the world, right? <laughs> so people are probably in the comment section saying, she's a psychopath. You know what I mean? She doesn't know what she wants, but I want both. So now that I know my personality trait is like this and I know that I'm probably destined for this, now I have to figure out how I'm going to do both of them. Yeah. What's the foreigner perspective on Indian guys in terms of dating? What it's Indian hard guys? it really hard. it's like if you're from south america your perspective is going to be different right if you're from europe your perspective is going to be different i am again an arab north african woman I, my perspective is like you guys are just like middle eastern and african guys like it's mm. the same there is no difference really to be honest with you so this whole personal life mathematics that you're doing mm -hmm. what have you figured from it like what do you want for example at this point i have figured that I need stability. That's okay. what I need like the most. Like I and and I've had a phase where I, I was seeing someone who was four or five years younger than I I am. Okay. And that was too much of a an age gap for me. Okay. Because I felt like that phase of life where they're like 24, 25, there's too, too young. many variables. It's too young. Yeah. yeah it's too and young. Uh, the uh, right after that. I started dating someone who was like around my age and it was so much more stability. Mm -hmm. Stability gave me a sense of healing almost. Oh, yes, for sure. So of that's course. become you, my... You cannot... You're in your 30s now. You're going into a different phase in life, a phase of where you're going to start thinking about these things that we've been speaking about. You cannot be dating someone who's 22 because she's in a different space in her mind completely. She's still trying to figure out who she is. You so, know what I mean? That was my thought before dating her. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she pursued the relationship more. And she told me that, hey, you know what? I understand you're in like a marriage and stable relationship zone. Mm -hmm. So am I. But once we began dating, it started like kind of breaking down mm -hmm. because she wasn't actually in that space. And I have yeah. another female friend who I was, uh, after I broke up with this particular girl, I just told her that, hey, you know, this is what happened to me. That female friend of mine told me that, you know, a lot of girls, especially in media, will portray uh, another reality mm -hmm. in order. It's like the, I mean, I don't like saying this, but it's sort of like the player version of girls. Yeah, for sure. That that happens. Yes, of because course. as a guy, you assume girls are really sweet. Girls are no, the, no. So this. So you assume girls are sweet. I think I got played in that one equation, but I'm realizing that now. And it's not, I'm not saying that I'm some dulka dhula. Like mm. I have also made mistakes in my life. Mm. I've never been a player, but I may not have given a hundred percent to certain relations. I never cheated or anything. Okay. But just in terms of... You were not in hundred percent. Maybe I wasn't as into it as the girl was. Mm. Uh, and a few times I've been on the receiving end. Two or three times in For my sure. life I've been yeah. on the receiving end, but I'm more into it and the girl's not. Mm. Uh, but the fact that... A girl lied to me like this was the first time. Like Obviously, because you said no. And she wanted something she can't have. And a lot of girls... I must Let me put a disclaimer here, guys. I'm not <laughs> speaking about everyone. This is just general. That's all. There are obviously women who are great and girls who are great. Um, but there are a lot of girls who, if you say no, they want it even more. Yeah. And then they will say anything to get it. Um, even 
for example, for you to be like, hey, I'm in a whole marriage serious space. And she said, yeah, me too. Mm. You're 23. Why are you even thinking about that? But that's because you said no and she wants something that she couldn't have and she's ready to risk it all for it, which is crazy. But women are like that. A lot of women are like that. Definitely. And we are not sweet. Girls are not sweet. Girls are not sweet. Whoever told you that, don't be naive. It's probably the perception you have because of seeing Kajol with Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but in the real world, as much as you know, we bash men, because like we have this thing where it's in fashion to bash men and be like, men are all assholes. And a lot of women are crazy. A lot of women are crazy. A lot of women are conniving. A lot of them will are great actors in real life maybe not in front of the camera but in real life yes and they will portray a certain image and um they will suck you in to a a reality that doesn't even exist yeah you know they that's will, how i felt mm-hmm, yeah they will lie to you they'll play you they'll manipulate situations and they'll emotionally manipulate you oh man some girls are so good at that what is emotional manipulation what do you mean? Emotional manipulation? It's 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 it is what it is. I mean, manipulating your emotions, and manipulating the, their emotions on you, getting the guy to like you more, making you feel um, bad about things, guilty about things, changing your mind about certain things, changing your perspective about certain things, uh, changing the course of certain of where things are going. Um, maybe changing who you are, how you think, what your beliefs are. Of course, women can do all that. But what's the kick? Like, why? Why do this in the first place? Because women are crazy. Most, not all. I mean, I know guys also do this stuff. Men also do that. Yeah. Men do it to a different different degree. Yeah. In different aspects, in different departments. But yeah, women, Some there are some great girls out there too who are like, boss, I just want a good guy. I want a normal life. I want stability and security. And then there are some girls who are so fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why did God even create you? But yeah, that's that's also there. Some humans that are so fucking crazy. Yes, and that's why I feel like it's the parents' it's responsibility when they're bringing you up to educate you about this so that you're aware, so that your intuition becomes strong when you're growing up and you can start filtering the crap. As you go along. It's crazy as you brought this up. Okay. Because in the break, this is what I was thinking about. I was, mm-hmm. I was thinking that I need to speak about intuition. To mm-hmm. You. Mm-hmm. So everyone has intuition. Everyone, right? You just have to be so self-aware to connect to your intuition and understand what it's trying to tell you. Have you seen so many people that after the fact, then they go, oh my God, my this was telling me something. I felt something here and it's kind of too late now. That has happened so many times. So when it happens so many times in your life, you have to be alert and smart enough and connected with your soul to be like, okay, the next time it happens, I know what I'm going to do. The next time it happens, I'm going to be aware. I'm going to listen to it. and I'm going to make certain decisions based on that. That takes a lot of time. That takes uh, maturity, life experiences. You have to live life to actually start understanding what this is trying to tell you and there are times where this is telling you something and you're like shut up shut up shut up wait i I have to do this or i have to go here i have to talk to this person and then you're like okay maybe i should have not done this but yeah after ramzan do you feel heightened intuition yeah even during during also, yeah, yeah, because during. of the fasting. Yeah, yeah, because I fast every day. Every day, even though I'm working and, and everything, but I never leave my fast every day since the age of 14. I have fasted. It's just been instilled in our brains. Like when I was 14, like when you are supposed to start fasting after your puberty, your parents hammered in your head, you have to fast. Um, so growing up, we went to school fasting. We went, we did everything fasting. It was normal. So when Ramadan came, you stuck to it. So even now... People are like, how are you fasting and you're working and you're traveling every day? You're on a flight every day. You're on sets every day. You have to be active. A part of my job description is to be physically active as a performer, right? But um, I don't break my fast. I keep my fast going. And then you keep it going, whatever. It's not It's not the end of the world. In fact, it's a great time for me to become more disciplined um, and more spiritual. And when you know that 
you're going into a situation that's going to be physically, mentally tough, you just straight, strengthen your discipline. And, and, and it works so well in other aspects in life, in your work, in your relationships. You think differently, you act differently. Um, and I have so much respect for people who fast and are still working. Like there's an athlete recently he was speaking about, he's a basketball player. He's fasting while he's playing basketball. And, you know, everyone's like, how are you doing it? And he's like, well, it's, it's my duty. I have to do it and I have to be spiritually inclined and respectful to my religion, but I still have to go to work. So I, why do I have to choose this or this? So I fast, I go to work. And in the midst of all this, I feel more in tune, as you said, to my intuition, more in tune to my actions, my thoughts, um, and more spiritually sensitive. Yeah. You also pray? Yeah, yeah, Every for day. sure. Yes, yes, yes. That's the, that's where the intuition comes from. Yes, 100%. I think you're right. It's the same thing as when people meditate. I it feel is like, meditation. yeah, it, no, prayer is definitely meditation. Um, and when you go into your zone of connecting with your creator, um, whoever that is for you or for anyone else, you're on a different realm, I feel like, spiritually and mentally. That's the survival skills shield that mm -hmm. people don't understand because people are trying to practicalize and rationalize mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you actually begin praying with your heart, mm -hmm. you realize mm -hmm. everything that it gives you. Especially sure. if your ambition is huge. Especially if your ambition is huge. Listen, it's not just ambition, but especially if you are sensitive to nazar, sensitive to... Um, people who don't have good intentions or goodwill for you especially if you're out exposed to the world you know you need a shield you need safety you need something to guard you and I think prayer really does guard you and help you get out of certain situations um when we pray five times a day what's so beautiful about it is that in the chaos of the world and whatever you're doing there's two minutes that you stop and you remember your creator and you thank him and you also ask for things you ask for protection you ask for forgiveness you ask for all these things and it's so nice to have that ability five times a day if you are able to pray five times a day i'm not saying i pray five times a day there are sometimes i forget to sometimes i'm too busy sometimes i'd only do two or three i it's a working progress for me between me and myself i work towards doing that but when you can it's a moment where you connect and you remember certain things. And of course, when you remember to be more grateful and thankful, the universe or God gives you more, right? It's, it's, an, it's a transaction almost, right? The law of attraction. Um, and when you're seeking a moment with your creator, automatically that makes you more spiritually stronger and that makes you more protected from the external things that are coming your way especially if you're a public figure okay, okay so this is something i've wondered about namaz hmm. okay. when you're sitting for it there's a man, there's a chant you're doing in your head right so while you're chanting are you also thinking of your wishes so you're not chanting so what you what you're doing is first there are things that we memorize when we're doing our namaz so you're memorizing the shahada right which is your um Prayer. Well, your shahada is basically bearing witness that there's only one God, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you're reiterating that. Once you reiterate that, you start to read the ayats from the Quran, which you're memorizing. There are specific ayats that we have to say when we start our pray prayer, like uh, ayat, sorry, surahs, like surah al-Fatiha. That's a surah that we have to always start our namaz with. And all Muslims who pray have memorized this surah. So we always start with that surah means a whole chapter basically of the quran then there are um is it like in the form of poetry uh, yeah so it really okay. is yes yes it okay. really is yeah and you recite it when you're reciting it you recite other chapters of the quran and then you start to say things like i thank god i thank god the creator i thank god the creator and then when you prostate and you have your your um head to the floor and you're praying that is the moment where you're asking for forgiveness that is the moment where you're asking for anything you're, you're making your duas basically that is the moment where you're connected to god at a 
different level altogether. Um, and people use that moment for a lot of things, to say a lot of things. Most people use that for forgiveness, really, because we're sinners, right? Throughout the day, we're constantly sinning. So that's the moment where, again, you're reconnecting with God. Again, you're trying to clean your slate. Um, and then when we get up again, we recite the surahs again, we do our ayahs again, and then we go back down. And it is kind of a, a bit of, it is literally meditation, it really is. Because what you're doing when you're meditating is you're chanting, right? But you're chanting really strong words. They have meaning. They have spiritual meaning, right? Um, and the opening realms where you start to connect with another higher energy. So when we are doing our namaz and whatever we say, as much as I'm saying they're surahs and they're ayats, but they're, they have a lot of strong meaning and energy power. attached, yes, and power attached to them. So we are technically, it's, it's almost the same. It's almost the same. Yeah. But it, it's, 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 there's a whole science behind prayer. And I think because we've been so distracted with worldly things and technology and phone and Instagram, and um, there was a period of time where it wasn't cool to be religious and it wasn't cool to talk about spirituality and it wasn't cool to be connected with your creator. So that era, which I think it's disappearing slowly, yeah. in that era, people didn't want to think about this or talk about it. Now we're going into an era where people want to talk about it more. They're open-minded. They want to learn more. I think we should take this opportunity to research these things more because there is a science behind why we do what we do, why we pray, why we connect ourselves to our creator and why we meditate and why we isolate ourselves for some time and we try to um, almost connect our, our inner being with the higher energy, the higher power. Uh, this is a saying that came up on the show in one of our past episodes. Someone said that, you know, we're so obsessed with reality that we don't understand that reality will actually begin after this reality ends. Mm, and is, then this, we realize is, this, that, is this even real? Yeah, that all this is a dream. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just playing a part in the illusion. Look, it's possible. We have to be open to all these things. Words have power. Paragraphs mm -hmm. have power. Mm -hmm. Poetry thoughts, has, thoughts. Thoughts have, have power. power. Uh, language has power, mm -hmm. especially ancient languages. Uh, yes. Um, I think what I was getting to with that question was about wh what was the word you said before dua? B b like you bend down do the dua, but right before that, the paragraph? Uh, the, the surahs? Surahs. Yeah. So that would be inward, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That you're you're taking it in, mm -hmm. you're memorizing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And duas are outward. Mm -hmm. Then you go back mm -hmm. to doing something inward. Something that you've already memorized. Mm -hmm. Duas are things that are coming out of from your system, from your brain. So there's a receiving and then there is giving that happens. While you're receiving, does any other thought enter your head? Yes, of course. See, look, here's the thing about praying, right? And meditating. You have to have immense self-discipline and self-control which is so hard to do as a human and even like the dean even the religion tells you this that when you're praying it is probably one of the most hardest things because you have to be mentally so focused that your brain cannot go anywhere else you can't be thinking about what am i going to do today what's the daily schedule or did i eat did i not eat did i switch off the light in the bathroom before or after did i what is my friend going to call me what am i going to do next so you can't be thinking you have to be only focused on that one thing that moment you have with your creator so how do you do that as a human when we are so multi-dimensional we are most of us multitask our brains are uh, running on thousand kilometer per hour uh, a lot of us have ADHD also. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of factors. So how do you do this? I'm sure when you meditate, you have a hard time tuning out too, right? For the full time that you're meditating. So what happens is you might tune out for a second and then you bring yourself back again. It happens again. You bring yourself back again. And then you keep doing that until you're so disciplined, which is hard, but you work towards that. And once you're able to have that kind of mind control on yourself, imagine what all you can do in your life. 
in other departments, how much discipline and self-control you can have. So what essentially what you're doing is you're building on your character, you're building on your morals and values, and you're building on you as a human when you're outside in, in the society, you're able to control yourself more. Um, and you're probably able to sin less too. You're able to make certain decisions because you're controlling your mind better. You have more um, self-control, but it's a deep conversation. That's like a different episode altogether because nobody's ever asked me this question. So this would be kind of new for a lot of people to hear me speak about this kind of topic. But definitely this could be a separate uh, episode because I think a lot of people are interested to know everything behind what we just discussed. Prayer builds you up. That's what I truly mm-hmm. believe. Mm-hmm. It definitely builds you up and it builds your uh, your faith. It solidifies your faith and it creates a um it creates a protection hmm. a border around you and many people have said this there have been spiritual people who have said this there have been uh scientists who said this many people say that prayer in a very mysterious way protects you spiritually not everything has to be quantified or understood of course, of course, hundred percent I mean you, experiencing you can't see air right but it's mm. there <laughs> you mm. know what I mean so Hey, didn't expect that we'll go here, Nora Fatehi. Mm, We're almost definitely. at the we end. We can do a part two this year sometime. <laughs> We're almost at the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. It was really cool getting to know the human inside. It was really nice. I'm really happy yeah. I came. I did not expect any of this. I thought we'd be <laughs> talking about random stuff. I'm glad we went deep. I'm glad we spoke about certain topics that maybe other people would not feel comfortable speaking about. But, you know... um, I had a duty to be unfiltered coming here for you also as much as you had a duty to ask me the right questions. And I hope people learned something today. Um, I think one thing probably a lot of people will go home with, whether they agree with some of the things I say or not. And also people's, don't forget, people's ideas change, right? People's mental thoughts change, opinions change. Today, these are my opinions. I don't know what my opinions are going to be when I'm 45, right? Life changes you. You see things. Right now, this is who I am. Um, And I think what people will take home is not to judge a book by their cover, by its cover, and also to be more open-minded and to realize that people are not the same. People don't think the same. People don't live by the same values and thoughts. And to also be more sensitive. (sighs) Okay, there's a lot to unpack with you. Uh, over the next few episodes, which will mm-hmm. happen over the next few years. Mm-hmm. I hope to see you at least once every year. Because I would love that. You're a, I, I mean, didn't even a, know you were this great. I mean, I watched <laughs> some of your stuff and I'm like, you're cool, you're fun, your stuff goes viral. But beyond that, it's deep. And I'm so glad I could find someone that could discuss the more deeper things because I think that's what people want to know right now. Life is so hard. People are going through it, man. People are going through shit. Mm. And I think it's nice to have a moment and to discuss the deeper things. On a more metaphysical level, you're simply helping a past version of yourself. That's the present version in another timeline. Yeah, because I would have loved to see someone like me growing up. When you were 20 Younger. years old. Yeah. Definitely. This is like the kind of shit that you wanted answered then. So I'm almost jealous of like the 20 year olds who get access to not just Hell this yeah. show, but a all, lot of other stuff. Yeah, all I of agree. the world of content. Totally. There's this increase in worldwide consciousness that everyone can sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people view it as an increase in worldwide pain. But I think that that's uh, how meditation works. You have to face your pain, your trauma first mm. until it starts getting better. I agree. So I think the earth is meditating at this point. I think so too. Yeah. Nora Fateh, thank you. Thank uh, you, sweetie. This podcast was like meditation for all of us. Thank you. And I'm very excited to see how the internet uncovers more of you because you have a lot to say. Thank you. I've sweetie. not done justice to your experiences like in this conversation, mm-hmm. but we have many more conversations. 100%. Whenever you need me, I'm here. <laughs> thank, thank you. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Nora. Thank you. That was the episode for today, ladies and gentlemen. The harsh truth is that I struggle to find English guests for this podcast. There's an infinite number of Hindi guests. And if the universe gifts us with an epic guest like this, I know for a fact that the English podcast is safe at least for a little while longer. Today's conversation has just gotten over. Nora's just left my house. So I've not processed it completely. But all I can say at this point... Since she's left, 
is that this was one heck of an inspiring lady. Myself, my team, we're all feeling a sense of inspiration. We're all feeling a sense of fire, and our energy isn't drained. That's Nora Fatehi's real energy that you've gotten a glimpse of in today's episode. She's going to be back on the show. Some epic TRS episodes are coming your way. Keep supporting this podcasting journey. Is just getting started. <laughs>